The thing that drives me is curiosity. I want to know how their brains work. I want to know how they're being impacted by the ways that we're changing our planet and what we could possibly do to try to help them. My name is Hollis Woodard. I'm an assistant professor of entomology, and this is how I work. I have a lab here at the University of California, Riverside. It's in the entomology building. I'm an entomologist. That means I study insects, and I study specifically bees, mostly bumblebees. I'm kind of obsessed with bees. I work with bumblebees specifically because they're understudied. We know a lot less about them, but we know that they're here in the U.S., and we know that many of their populations are in decline. As the principal investigator in the lab, I do a lot of what's on the front end of science, so a lot of writing grant proposals, writing manuscripts that will be submitted to different journals for publication. And then when I can, I try to get in the lab and play around with the bees a little bit. The two main bumblebee species that I've worked with are Bombus impatiens and Bombus terrestris. I've been stung thousands of times. The most I've ever been stung in one day, probably 20 stings, which is actually pretty low for someone that's been a beekeeper. You get used to it, just brush it off. When they're young like this, their cuticle isn't hardened, even if the sting is protruding. Sometimes they can't get you, but it's a little dicey. My favorite part of my job is getting to play with the bees. So I love to set up a different experiment, predict what I think is gonna happen, and then actually do the experiment to see if what I think uh, is going on is actually happening. Bumblebees are very charismatic. They live in these social groups where you'll find cooperation between individuals, but you also see conflict and fighting. And so it plays the edge between cooperation and conflict. It's one thing to know that a group of bees live socially, but it's another thing to try to understand how they actually came to be that way. So one of the ways that we can do that is by looking at bee genomes. To do that, we put bees in cages and feed them different diets. Then we collect them into liquid nitrogen. So we want to flash freeze them so that we can get a perfect sort of preserved picture of what sorts of RNAs. Um, are in the body at the time that they're killed. After that, we will dissect out their fat bodies, and from those, we will extract RNA. And so to extract the RNA, we have to homogenize the tissue. We add different reagents and remove the RNA from the sample, and then we quantify how much RNA we've been able to extract from each sample. So we're using molecular approaches to try to answer questions about bees that people haven't been able to answer before. When I go home, I read about bees. I do some gardening and plant things that I know will attract more bees. On the weekends, if I go hiking, I'm always looking for bees. I've dedicated my life to studying bumblebees. I'm incredibly lucky.